just before Opus 25, number 11. It's interesting that both these etudes start, one starts very low and goes all the way up, and the other one starts all the way up and comes all the way down here. So it covers quite a bit of the keyboard, and we really have to be aware of that. You saw when I started here when, where my torso was to begin with, and we have to be very aware of where the torso is when we start here. If we sit over here and just the arm goes there, it's going to tire very, very quickly. <coughs> so the role of the torso is not to play the piano, but to be in the right place so that the playing parts can really play at their maximum uh, effect, I would say. So I'm starting right here. Now, one of the things that makes this opening actually not difficult if you have the, you know, the rotation in your technique is that it's all single rotations, like trills, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now, I don't have much time, but I would say fingering is very crucial in everything that we do, and different editions have different fingerings. But the one that I use is, I'll, I'll go quickly, and whatever you capture, you do. It's five, two, four, one, four, two, three, one, four, two. Notice when I go to the four, my arm adjusts. It's adjusting on each one, but this is all close by. This has to come in a little bit to get you to the next kind of position. Four, two, five, one. Then I do five, two, four, one. Five, two, four, one. Five, two, four, one. Now, if someone has a smaller hand and it's a little bit, feels a little bit stretchy here, can always go to the fifth finger. The reason it will not be my first choice is because here is an extra motion going in. Nothing is wrong with it when you do it correctly, but every extra motion takes a little bit of extra time. And when we talk about speed, we have to look at what, what, is the, the, what, what is the best fingering for the least amount of movement. But if it's going to be a stretch, even with rotation, with a four, you can go to the five. Now, as we go, by the way, if this tapes well, it will be on my blog. So whatever you're missing, um, you know, you can, uh, you can go and look and you will hear, you can slow it down, you, you'll hear the same words. Now, as I go down, my forearm and my torso are moving with me. So the walking hand and arm, the adjustment, the rotation is always bringing the forearm with it so that it's always walking together. Uh, let me just see what um, if there's anything else that I want to say. Um, yes, when we get to uh, measure nine, we get into the issue of uh, arpeggios. And this is why we always teach the basic technique, the how to go from finger to finger, scale work, arpeggios at the beginning, because this is the basic grammar of technique. And from there, you can expand and go to other, you know, other issues. But here, one of, of the complaints <coughs> when people play uh, octave, I'm sorry, arpeggios, is that it feels insecure. And they very often, what they do, they disconnect because if you move with your fingers alone, there's no way to get there but to, discon but to disconnect. And when you disconnect, when it can be connected, it's going to feel insecure. So those of you who, who know the rotation, you know, it's a single and a single. Now watch what my phone is doing. The reason I can connect is because the phone is working with me. If I stayed here, it would be too big a movement. So as you see, everything has to happen very, very gradually. If I wait, my forearm will be in one place. This is why the context and the, the question at the beginning, why is this not an under, why is it an over, is that, again, we always have to see how quick it can get to where you're going and be there, be, or be almost there. So the thumb can get right under. It's all single. 
uh, and this is another situation similar to the when you go up with the you know the previous etude. And I was talking how we go into the right, but the thumb is always turning back in its own direction. Same here, as we go up, you turn back on the thumb. That gives you the motion to get across this leap without missing, if it's done properly. So it's going to look, when you see that it's going to look like a lot of motion this way. But as you combine it with the in and out, you're coming a little bit out to a little bit out to the four, and you're getting a little bit higher and coming back to the thumb, down to the thumb. When you have that combination, everything looks very smooth and feels very smooth and very small. And then coming down, some people do it with a fourth finger, in which case you can connect. I prefer five. Uh, going from five, I can connect the sound there. <coughs> Why? Because this feels more in the hand. This requires a little bit more motion, not to stretch. It feels a little bit more open. And it's nice to have the hand feel more closed. But it's a choice. You know, we have fingerings that it's a choice as long as there is no sense of stretching, uh, isolating, whatever it is. So again, whichever one you're taking, you have the single rotation. If it's to the four, you can connect. If it's to the five, you cannot connect. You disconnect. This is the other side of that. It's exactly what we're doing here with a little bit of distance. So when you get, it's a group, and it's a group, and it's a group. And you see where my arm is walking down. That's very often a strange place for people to find themselves because we're not used to coming over that much when necessary. Um, the other thing is in going up also. If again, if the arm pulls away from the thumb, you're not going to make it to the five with security. So again, the turning back gives you the ability to move over that larger distance with security, as I said before, and especially in measure 12, you have less, but here suddenly there is that. And that's a place that very often people go and they miss. Now what happens, why should we go in the opposite direction? Because when we move ourselves, it's slower, you can try it. When you have to pick yourself also, it's insecure to go in speed and go like, you see, I, I, I miss it. I don't know, there's no sense of where you're going, there's no sense also of something that you can count on that will always get you there. So a lot of what's in technique is counterintuitive and seems at the beginning not to make total sense. If I'm going to the right, why do I go back to the left? But there has to be, if we don't do that, we're stretching. We're stretching, we're pulling, we have to pick ourselves up. It doesn't feel good. And we get into trouble.